Hi everyone, it's Tasha. Hello out there and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving right into a Christmas decorating episode and the first thing up is going to be my mantle and fireplace area. So as you can see, I've emptied it all out and I'm thinking I'm just going to leave the firewood which was already there. That's obviously perfect for the winter season. So I had these two woven pears. They were very large. I found these at a thrift shop last year and they were out for Thanksgiving, but I'm actually going to leave them right on through for Christmas. And I'm just going to add some velvet ribbon to the top of each for a little festive touch. And I'm going to place those opposite on the fireplace from my stack of wood. Next, I know I'm going to want a large painting as the center of my mantle. So first I'm just taking these two spare pieces of wood and stacking them and putting them at the back so that that picture will be a little bit higher up because I'm going to be placing garland and I don't want it to cover up most of my picture. So this painting is a vintage painting. I picked it up earlier in the year and it's been out all seasons um, in a different area, but it's going to be featured on the mantle for the Christmas season. I have two pieces of garland that I got last year, both for Amazon um, open box discounts. And so the bottom one is this variegated two-tone green. And then I have this one that I'm going to be placing on the top to thicken things up. That's a little bit darker. And I like the way these look stacked on top of each other. So I'm just placing these as best I can across the whole mantle. It's nice and fluffy and my painting isn't covered up since I have it elevated a little bit. And this year I thought just to change things up a little bit, I would add this cream colored silk ribbon to each end. So I'm just tying a little bow on each side. And I like the way this just gives it a little bit more of a festive touch without being too fussy. You could certainly use something more colorful as your accent if you were going to do this idea. Something in burgundy, something, whatever color you're using for Christmas this year would be beautiful. And next I have these minimal stocking hangers. I got these from Amazon this year because I needed a new set. Mine were kind of clunky and I didn't really want them to show too much. I also have this set of new stockings that I got from Amazon. And this is a strangely Amazon heavy episode for some reason versus my usual thrift store finds. But um, these were so pretty and these were actually only $15 for the set of three. The quality really surprised me with how nice it is. And then I also made this smaller one for Curry the Cat and I made it out of an old sweater that I had. So I'm just going to hang these up and see how they look. I love the way these look. These are actually surprisingly thick um, and I liked how the price also went down. You could buy these in sets of three, four, all the way up to 10 and the price actually decreased the unit cost um, as you went up. I thought these were a great deal. And so for my stocking tags, I'm actually waiting for mine to come in once again from Amazon and I'm ordering us each a customized wire stocking tag with our names. I'm even getting one for Curry. So I'm waiting on those. I'll be sure to let you know in a post update how I like them and how the quality is. The reviews are really good, so I'm looking forward to them. And also, I'll be sure to link all of this Amazon stuff in the description box below just in case you're interested. And as you can see, they offer lots of color choices for the wire that they use. I ordered ours in brown, but they have a lot of nice color options. I also had another idea just to share with you in case you didn't want to buy a stocking tag, but you wanted to change it up. I got some plain craft beads. These don't have any lacquer on them. They're just unfinished wood. And I decided to try out my stamp set. This is just regular stamping ink. And I also have this set of um, letters and numbers. So I thought it would be cute to just try and see if we could make an initial bead. Now this is just a cube, not a bead, but um, just for showing purposes. And it actually stamped really well, nice and crisply. I don't know how it would do on a lacquered or glossed wood, but on unfinished wood, it looks really nice. And you could actually string this up to make a full name for each stocking tag or just do one bead that has an initial for each person. But that's just a good, really thrifty way to make stocking tags if you didn't want to buy anything new this year, especially if you already have a stamp set. So 
So this set of vintage bells I got last Christmas. I ordered them from eBay actually, so unfortunately I can't link to these, but um, I really like this look of just the three grouped bells hanging down over top of the ivory stockings. Now I know I'm gonna be placing my brass candlesticks. These are just thrifted from several years ago and I have a lot more of them around the house, but this year I decided to tie just a thick piece of cotton cord around each and make a little bow to kind of carry over the bows that I'm using on the end of the garland. Just a little touch and they actually show up a little bit more in real life than they do on camera, but of course if you have another accent color that would really pop up there. Just be careful, obviously, if you're going to actually burn your candles, especially burning them all the way down. You wouldn't want them to catch on fire, but I thought it was a cute touch this year. And as some of you have seen, I made this Jingle Bell garland in my last video as a kind of dupe for the Our House Jingle Bell garland, and I have it hanging. It looks just as beautiful as I expected it would, so I'm really happy with it. And my last touch is I'm just going to add a few pine cones to the garland. I tried some ornaments up there, but it was just competing a little too much with the bells in my opinion. So I'm just going to nestle some of these baby pine cones from the yard throughout the garland. And I'm kind of making sure to stagger and do one higher than one lower as I go so they don't end up in a straight line. I really like how these add just another small touch up here without being too over the top and still giving it a really natural look. And next I just wanted to share with you a really cool find that I had this year. I found this little liquidation store close by me in the Durham area and they were selling these preserved olive leaf wreaths for only $12 each. They were still new in the box and they had multiple so I got three of them. These are usually at least $40 new um, so I was really excited to find them at $12 each and I figured I would use them around the inside of our house. I'm putting one in our dining room window and I think it looks really nice. I have three ribbons on hand at the house right now that I could choose from. I'm probably going to pick up some more of that cream colored one that I used on the mantle actually, but I wanted to show you. I used this burgundy chiffon last year, and so this is how this one looks, and I apologize, it's very bright behind the shot obviously, but, and I used the black the year before that, but this year I'm going to pull out this sort of caramel colored brown for the moment and then maybe pick up some more cream colored to go more with the mantle. So this one is on my front door and I decided to put a twist tie through the back of the bow and that way I could just hang it separately on the command hook, just kind of over top of the wreath. And that way, number one, I'm not squishing my wreath or messing it up. And number two, it just makes it really easy to get that bow on and off. This is actually my first time doing a wreath on the inside of the door and I love it. So for this little entryway area, I'm just going to swap out my glass pumpkin and the little vase. I'm gonna swap out the glass pumpkin for a glass Christmas tree, which is convenient. And I'm gonna keep the same kind of bowl filler and pine cones inside and the silver pine cone for where the little brown vase was. And I'm pretty much done over here. I really like to keep tabletops nice and minimal, even at the holidays. So I also have this print I printed out last year. I found the image online. It's public domain and I will link this and a few more that I like um, for you in the description box. These links will take you directly to the files that you can download for free and then you can have them printed pretty much anywhere you would like in whatever size. I printed mine off at Walmart last year. And so what I'm doing this year is adding some Mod Podge over the top. I had it under glass last year, but I decided to Mod Podge over it this year to give it more of a painted look and I'm going to leave the glass off. I just saved the glass inside the frame just behind the print. That way, if I wanna put it back under glass or use it for something else, I'm not getting rid of the glass. But I'm just taking also and making sure to kind of tap on all of these areas where it's more like brush and leaves to give it more of a authentic feel once it's dried. This will look a little bit more realistic for the brush and trees area. 
and I'm hanging this over near my front doorway area. And now let's decorate the tree. I have two trees to do this year, but I'm going to do this one along with you guys. Now in this shot, it is early morning and no one else is up yet. And I'm unboxing my new garland. I wanted to change out my garland this year and I got this one from Amazon and I love the color of it. A lot of garland that I was searching for was that shiny gold and that's what I have here to compare. This is what I had before. And I was just, I guess, a little bit over the shiny gold for this year. I'm still going to hang on to it because I think there is a place for that color gold and I might want to use it again. But for this year, I really like this kind of matte, a little bit more matte copper tone. And I like how this looks on my tree. My tree is obviously flocked. It's kind of like a medium to light flocking, I would say. So then later in the day, I have out the ornaments that I'm going to use. And the first thing I'm going to do when I start is take my solid colored ornaments and start to place those. That way, since they carry kind of the most weight on the tree visually, I'm ma making sure I have space to really spread those out and make the tree look even. So I have my brown bulbs and I have my brown pine cones, and then after those are spread out, I can start to put on my accent pieces. So I'm looking for accent pieces, first of all, that I have duplicates of, and I have two of these sets of three bells that I got from Walmart, as some of you might have seen in a previous video. So I'm just spreading those out. One is down on the lower left side, so I raise the other one up on the more top right hand side to spread those out. I like to make sure that the same ornaments aren't like right beside each other or right above each other vertically, kind of spread them out more on an X shape. And now I'm going to start to place more of my singular accent ornaments where there's only one. So I have this set that I found, I think two years ago at Goodwill. And it's a set of 10 of these beautiful vintage ornaments by David Mon. And um, each one of them is different. They're all silver and gold. And I just absolutely love this set. This is my favorite part of decorating this tree is putting these ornaments on. So I'm going to start on these now. I like to start by placing the larger ornaments because like I said earlier, those are going to have more of the visual weight, especially the larger ones that are more similar in shape. I wanna make sure to really spread those out so they don't end up close together and kind of throwing off the look of the tree. So I have one down low, I'm going to hang one in this space that's a little bit higher and more to the right. And then I'll hang the last one that's very similar to that in shape over on the other side and kind of make a triangle with them. I really love this one in particular. I think it's my favorite one. I hung it here at first and then I thought, well, it's right beside another gold one, which is fine, but I think it's nice if you can also not only vary your shapes, but vary your colors when you have a mixture of colors like this. So I have a similar shaped one actually the same exact shaped one in um, frosted glass so I decided to put that one beside that gold instead and I just have a few more of these to place. I'm really loving how this is looking as it's coming together with the mixture of the browns and the white, the flocking on the tree, the gold and the silver. I think that this is a really classic color combo and it could work for any Christmas. And then also if you wanted to add in a color that wasn't a neutral color to this mix, it would be really easy to add in a burgundy or add in whatever other color you might want to and it will always go, all the ornaments will always go together each year, no matter what accent color you choose to add. I'm using some of my bulbs that I DIY'd in a previous video with the sandstone, and I can't forget to also use my leather ornaments that I made from the belts as well. 
Plus this little crocheted bell that I found for 25 cents at the thrift store. He really needs a home on our tree this year. What I really like about this tree also is the mixture of textures. You have the rough sandstone, you have the frosted glass, you have some silk wrapped ivory ornaments. You also have some really shiny like the mercury glass and a little bit of glitter, as well as the shiny pine cones. And then you also have the wooden beads in the garland. So I really like the mixture of textures. I think it all works really well together. And I've been working on this throughout the day, little by little, and now it's kind of the golden hour, the lights are changing, and I like the way the tree looks as it kind of glows warmer and warmer in the afternoon and towards the evening. So what I did for the top of the tree this year, I had a hard time deciding, but eventually I decided to use this piece of linen ribbon that I had in storage, as well as this gold star. I've had this gold star for a couple of years and I'm not tired of it yet. I just think it's a very nice design, just a very traditional star. And I noticed that a lot of the designers are actually using more of a that traditional, just plain gold star at the top this year too. So just so happens that it's right on trend, but I wanted to keep within that silver and gold and the definitely neutral colors for this tree. And so I'm putting this star back on again this year. I just added the ribbon to kind of fill out the top since it looked a little bit thin up there. And I like the way the ribbon accents the other ribbons that I've used as well. And then the best part of the Christmas tree is always in the evening after it's dark when it's really glowing. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like this video, hit like, and if you would like to see more from me, then hit subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you have already decorated or if you're waiting until a couple of weeks before Christmas. And let me know what kind of accent colors and what you have going on for your decor for Christmas this year. Thanks so much again, and I will see you at the next video.